We now come to questions to Prime Minister Kirsten Oswald. Question one, please. Mr Speaker, I know the whole House will join me in congratulating John Swinney on becoming SNP leader and Scottish First Minister. I look forward to working constructively with him to deliver for the people of Scotland. Mr Speaker, this morning I had meetings with ministerial colleagues and others. In addition to my duties in this House, I shall have further such meetings later today. Mr Speaker, I'm glad the Honourable Lady agrees with me and the Government that we should do more to tackle youth vaping, and that's why we are bringing forward measures in the new Bill to restrict the availability and appeal of vapes to children, specifically whether that's flavours or, or indeed marketing. As she knows, advertising of vapes is already heavily restricted by UK regulations, including a ban on advertising on television and radio and most online. Now, we've seen football take positive voluntary action in the past on issues such as this, but I will say to her that the government will respond to the Honourable Lady's specific amendment in the usual way. We now come to leave the opposition, Keir Starmer. Mr Speaker, can I warmly welcome the new member for Blackpool South? After the representation that fine town has had recently, it's good to know they've got a proper champion back at last. Can I also warmly welcome the new Labour MP for Dover to these benches? Mr Speaker, if one week a Tory MP who's also a doctor says the Prime Minister can't be trusted with the NHS and joins Labour, and the next week the Tory MP for Dover on the front line of the small boats crisis, says the Prime Minister cannot be trusted with our borders and joins Labour, what is the point of this failed government staggering on? Well, Mr Speaker, can I actually join him in welcoming his newest MP for Blackpool? I must say he looks a lot happier than the member who was sitting there last week. Uh, But let 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 me also join with him And let me join with him in congratulating all new and paying tribute to all former councillors, PCCs and mayors across the country. I hope his his new ones do him as proud as I am of all of mine, Mr Speaker. Great leaders, great leaders like Andy Street, great leaders like Andy Street, who leave behind a strong legacy of more homes, more jobs and more investment, in sharp contrast to the legacy left by the last Labour government, which was a letter joking that there was no money left. Well, Mr Speaker, in in addition to losing two Tory MPs in two weeks, the Prime Minister has been on the receiving end of some of the biggest by-election swings in history. He's also lost 1,500 Tory councillors, half of his party's mayors, and a leadership election to a lettuce. (laughs) How many more times do the public and his own MPs need to reject him before he takes the hint? Uh, Well, Mr Speaker, this time last year I reminded him of uh, some advice, actually, from his own mentor, Tony Blair, who had said said at the time that he can be as cocky as he likes about local elections, but come a general election, it's policy that counts, Mr Speaker. One, one year on, one year on from that advice, one year on from that advice, what has he managed? £28 billion of tax rises, 70 new business regulations, 30 U-turns, and a deputy leader under a police investigation. Well, I'm surprised he brought up a police investigation. I think his record is played one, lot, no, actually two, the seatbelt as well. Played two, lost two in relation to police investigations. But it, it, it's the same. The, the public keep telling him, the voters tell him it's not good enough. Instead of listening, he keeps telling them everything's fine if only they realise his greatness. He, he just doesn't get it. But at least after Thursday night, Mr. Speaker, he can go to the many places that he calls home and enjoy the fruits of his success. In Southampton or Downing Street, he's got great Labour councils. Yeah! At his mansion in Richmond, he can enjoy a brand new Labour mayor of North Yorkshire. Yay! And at his pet pad in Kensington, he can celebrate a historic third term for the mayor of London. Yay! Now that he too can enjoy the benefits of this changed Labour Party, is he really still in such a hurry to get back to California? <laughs> uh, 
Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, I must say I was, I was of course surprised uh, to see the honourable gentleman in North Yorkshire. But probably, although probably, probably not as surprised, probably not as surprised as he was when he realised he couldn't take the tube there, Mr. <laughs> Speaker. But I can tell him that the people of North Yorkshire, the people of North Yorkshire, believe in hard work, secure borders, lower taxes, and straight-talking common sense, Mr. Speaker. They're not going to get any of that from a virtue-signalling lawyer from North London. It was great to be in North Allerton, where they just voted to reject the Prime Minister's proposition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, he's finally found something in common with the British public. No matter where he calls home, all his neighbours are backing this changed Labour Party. Yeah. And they keep rejecting him because they have sussed him out. They know there's nothing behind the boasts, the gimmicks, the smug smile. He's a dodgy salesman, desperate to sell them a dud. Now, Mr Speaker, 16 days ago, when he held a press conference claiming victory on Rwanda, he said the next few weeks will be about action. People want deeds, not words. So let's test that. How many small boat crossings have there been since he said that 16 days ago? Mr Speaker, Mr. Speaker actually, just before we go on to that, he talked about a change... He talked about... He talked about a changed Labour Party. That's important because he talked about a changed Labour Party. He talks about it a lot. But just this morning, and he also talked about his new mayor in London. So just this morning, we've learned that the Labour mayor in London believes, and I quote, that there is an equivalence between the brutal terrorist attack of Hamas and Israel defending itself. And let me be crystal clear. There is absolutely no equivalence between a terrorist group and a democratic state. So can I ask him now, will he take this opportunity to demonstrate, to demonstrate that that Labour Party has changed? And will he condemn those comments from the Labour mayor? Well, I know that was the last run out before the general election, but he's getting ahead of himself in asking me questions. <laughs> but he, he, Mr Speaker, I notice he didn't even attempt to answer the question. He knows the answer. Since he claimed victory 16 days ago, there have been a staggering 2,400 small boat crossings. 2,400. That's a gimmick, not a deterrent. And those 2,400 will be added to the Tories' asylum perma backlog, which is forecast to rise to 100,000 by the end of this year. Now, the Prime Minister pretends he will remove them all to Rwanda, but Rwanda can only take a few hundred a year. Yeah. At that rate, the Prime Minister's grand plan would take over 300 years to remove them all. <laughs> Mr Speaker, that is tens of thousands of people with their claims going unprocessed who are going to be here for their entire lifetime, living in hotels at the taxpayers' expense. It is absurd to call that anything other than an amnesty handed to them by the Tory party, isn't it? Well, Mr Speaker, he had the opportunity to condemn the comments of his mayor, a mayor who said that there is an equivalence between Hamas and Israel. He did not do that, and everyone will see what that is. That is the change Labour Party, Mr Speaker. Since I became Prime Minister, small boat crossings are down by a third. That's because we've doubled NCA funding, increased enforcement rates, closed bank accounts, deported 24,000 people, processed more claims, and, Mr Speaker, when it comes to border control, there is a crucial difference between us. We want secure borders. He's happy with open borders. Mr Speaker, the whole country knows that removing less than 1% of asylum seekers isn't stopping the boats, it's granting an amnesty, a Tory amnesty. But if he thinks the voters are wrong, if he thinks his own MPs joining the Labour Party are wrong, if he thinks anyone believes any of the nonsense that he spouts, why doesn't he put it to the test and call a general election? 
Mr. Speaker, he talks about removing people. This is a person who campaigned, who person who campaigned to stop the deportation of foreign national offenders. Mr. Speaker, it shows how out of touch his values are with the British people. But Mr. Speaker, it's yet another week where we hear nothing about his plan to do anything on the issues that matter to the country. Meanwhile, we're getting on reforming welfare and getting people into work. He opposes it. We're controlling migration, legal and illegal. He opposes it. And as we heard, Mr. Speaker, we are boosting defence spending to strengthen our country. He opposes it. And that's the difference. He snipes from the sidelines. The Conservatives are building a brighter future. You actually made it to the end of the video. Thank you for watching the video. If you would like to subscribe to the channel, which, why haven't you already, is somewhere over there. And also, if you want to watch more videos, also check out over there. I've been Jake from Just Jake. See you later.